And what will you do upon this world I have created for you? I, uh, I was planning on just building some boxes on the web. Seriously though, your browser represents each element on a web page as a rectangular box. This concept is known as the CSS box model, and this is how it works. First, you have your content area. Using these CSS properties, you can give a content area a set height and width. For example, let's give this divider a max width of 576 pixels. The height will have the default behavior of taking up as much space as the content needs. I'll also add a background color to this divider so it's easier to see the box boundaries. Next, you can use padding to clear space around the content. By adding 16 pixels of padding to the divider, you'll see the content now has some extra room from the side of the divider. After padding comes borders. I can add a border outside the content in the content's padding. The important concept to remember with borders is that they add to the total width and height of the element, even when the height and width are explicitly defined. To help show how this works, let's say we have a button on a page that we want to add a border to when a user hovers over it. You'll notice that the content shifts once I hover over the button, but why is this? The button doesn't have a border in its default style, so hovering over the button increases its size, pushing the rest of the elements away. To fix this issue, I'll add the same border to the button's default style, but will change the color to transparent. Now when I hover over the button, the content doesn't shift. The last concept is margin, which clears an area outside the border. In our example, I'll add a bottom margin of 16 pixels to the heading tag and 8 pixels to the paragraph tags. The catch with margins is that they can sometimes behave unexpectedly because of margin collapse. Watch this video here to learn more about that. And now that you know how spacing works on the web, go out and build some beautiful boxes.